Hello guys and welcome to the final part of the shoulder block podcast. In this part 3 we'll be talking about ultrasound guided suprascapular nerve block and axillary nerve block. So for the ultrasound guided suprascapular nerve block what we need to do is to identify the spine of the scapula and if in this diagram of the right scapula shown this demarcates the medial end and the acromion process demarcates the lateral end of the spine of the scapula. What we need to do is to get near the suprascapular notch which lies midway between these two points. So with the ultrasound probe in position 1 we try and visualize the medial end of the spine of the scapula. Moving the probe a bit more laterally brings us to a uh, position 2 which is a slightly more intermediate position between the medial end and the midpoint of the spine of the scapula. Moving the probe slightly more lateral will bring us to position 3. Here the ultrasound probe directly lies upon the scapular notch. Also note that the scapular notch corresponds to approximately the midpoint of the spine of the scapula. Having a look at how we do this on a patient, we have the patient in sitting position with the neck flexed and the hand on the opposite shoulder. At this point, we will be able to demarcate the spine of the scapula. We will also mark it the medial end and the lateral end of the spinal scapula, keeping the ultrasound probe directly over the medial end in position 1. As we move the probe a bit more laterally, we come to a more intermediate position which is the position 2. And moving the probe furthermore laterally, we come to lie directly above the suprascapular notch. This again corresponds to the midpoint of the spine of the scapula and lying just above it or cranial to it. Having a look at how this looks on the ultrasound, here we can see the medial end of the spine of the scapula and the trapezius lying directly above it in position 1. Moving the probe a bit laterally we come to position 2 where we can identify the fibers of trapezius and supraspinatus muscle. Finally, moving the probe further lateral brings the suprascapular notch into view and this is the position 3. Here we can see the suprascapular nerve lying in the suprascapular notch and the transverse superior ligament covering it. You may or may not be able to see the pulsations of the artery at this level. What we need to do is to bring the needle from medial to lateral direction aiming towards the suprascapular nerve and spilling local anesthetic around it. Let's have a look at an actual uh, block. So here we can see the needle coming from medial to lateral direction transversing through the trapezius and as it comes to supraspinatus level you can see the pulsations of the artery sorry not the pulsations of the artery but the movement of the muscle as the nerve is stimulating the muscle itself. We move the probe to try and bring the needle into view and now we can see the lowermost fibers of the suprascapular, uh, the uh, supraspinatus muscle getting stimulated and using the floor as a guide we can try and position the tip of the needle as close to the suprascapular notch as possible. Remember this is a 3D structure and just a 2D uh, image of the suprascapular notch as seen on the ultrasound is not enough to understand how easy or difficult it is to place the needle in the respective area. There we are depositing some local anesthetic around the suprascapular notch and about 5 to 10 mils is enough to produce a decent analgesic block. Having a look at ultrasound guided axillary nerve block, again what we need to do is to identify the spine of the scapula to identify the acromion process. We make use of the underlying humerus bone and the different directions of the two main muscles lying at this point which is the tricep and the deltoid. The axillary nerve lying in the quadrangular space emerges posterolaterally and is 
approximately can be seen under the fibers of the deltoid just as the tricep ends and the deltoid begins and this can very nicely be seen on the ultrasound. We place the ultrasound probe first in position 1 in the posterior arm along a vertical line that passes through the acromion process. And at this point we can see the fibers of the tricep. Next we need to move the ultrasound probe vertically, cranially along this line. So in this position 2, the ultrasound probe is directly lying above the end of the fibers of the tricep muscle, the beginning of the fibers of deltoid and the axillary nerve and the artery accompanying it with the humerus bone directly below it. Further moving the ultrasound probe into this final position which is position 3, you will be able to see the head of the humerus which is curved coming into view which confirms that this structure is actually the humerus. Having a look at the anatomy in a patient, you need to identify the spine of the scapula. The lateral end which is the acromion is important. Dropping a vertical line through the acromion process helps demarketing the line along which the probe needs to be moved. Also note that the top of the axillary fold demarcates the point or the horizontal level where the axillary nerve will lie. So in this position 1 along uh, this line we would see triceps first. Moving the probe a bit more cranially we come to position 2 and from this diagram we can easily understand how we would be able to see the axillary nerve under the fibers of deltoid. Finally moving the probe a bit more proximally you would come to position 3 where the curvature of the humeral head would come into view confirming the anatomy for us. Let's have a look at the ultrasound picture. Here we can see the fibers of tricep in position 1 lying directly above the humerus. Moving the probe a bit more cranially, the fibers of deltoid now come into the view and we can easily see the difference in the direction of tricep fibers and the deltoid fibers here. Moving the probe slightly more proximally. Now this is position 2 where the posterior circumflex humeral artery and the axillary nerve lying above the humerus but under the deltoid come into view. Moving the probe furthermore cranially the curved end of the humerus comes into view as shown here and that confirms the anatomy for us. Finally we can bring our probe back into position 2 like this and then bring our needle from cranial to caudal direction along the vertical line to try and stimulate the axillary nerve and deposit local anesthetic around it. So that was it guys. I hoped uh, that you liked this video and this podcast series. Uh, if you did then please uh, share this with your friends on different social platforms and I would see you next time in a more exciting uh, podcast.